he had a massive moral blowout and was off social media for an entire year and recently put up a post on Instagram addressing the controversy. So I'm glad that he got a new career because you definitely are disqualified from ministry. But as I peeled away at this, it's got really bizarre, all right? It's got really, really, really bizarre. Bruce Lawn. Jeremy Foster was pastoring the fastest growing church in America. And he had a massive moral blowout and was off social media for an entire year and recently put up a post on Instagram addressing the controversy. And some of the details around the situation came out and I wanted to play this video. I think this is a crazy cautionary tale for a lot of people in terms of folks that are looking to get into ministry, look, looking to build a platform and audience and some of the other consequences with that. But then there's also some other details that were revealed that I'll save to the end of the video that are uh, pretty jarring. Okay, so let's jump into this clip. This is directly from his Instagram. This is not hearsay. This is not someone else releasing it or speaking on his, on his behalf. Okay, and I'll stop and interject here or there where I see fire. A long time since you've heard from me. And um, it's for good reason. In the aftermath of everything that happened, uh, I wanted to, I wanted to shoot a video or write an email or address the congregation. Uh, but the board at Hope City at the time uh, didn't want me doing anything like that. They wanted me to stay quiet uh, publicly uh, and on social for a year, and uh, I did not like that decision. I didn't agree with it. And, and over the course of time, I began to see the wisdom in it, and it, and I'm grateful for that decision now. It was it was wise. I, I don't know that I would have even known what to say, how to say it, or even how to feel while saying it. Okay, for starters, man, his entire temperament here is just it's just heartbreaking, man. This, if 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 as a man, as a woman, these sorts of videos just don't drive home the point even more that you shouldn't be out here doing stuff like this. Like, I don't know what will. Every time we see a pastor come out and, and him be this vulnerable and share this, it just drives home the point of how, forget your career and your reputation, how broken he is over this, how broken he he was because he hurt his wife and he hurt his kids. It, it's just sad. And and we'll, again, we'll get into more of those details here in a moment. If you don't know, I, you know, I had a moral failure. I had an affair and I devastated my family i so that, that's what he did he had a moral failure he had an affair he's owning it he devastated his family he's, he's, he's flat out about it again we're gonna get to the details in a minute so make sure you watch till the end i hurt the church that i was leading and i hurt and confused a lot of uh, staff and volunteers and people that follow me and listen to me and love me and um you know, sometimes we, we tend to think that, and I've done it, people that uh, that we follow or listen to or love or... Yeah, I mean, that Billy Graham rule is clutch, but Anderson, it, it gets even more... It gets even... Again, when, when we peel away the layers, like, it's it's even more wild. So just, just bear with me. That they're somehow, you know, not uh, susceptible. I, and I, just to be quite frank, I... I I never would have thought that I would have done this. And I'm deeply sorry. I'm sorry to all of you. And uh, especially those of you who really put a lot of faith in me. I mean, it's something that I've said a lot, that, you know, don't trust me, trust God, God trust God. And um, yeah, Hope City Church, I believe that they're, in, I wanna say in Houston. I've learned a lot in this that, uh, that I think that I was, I was moving so fast. Cause slow down, man. A lot of you guys really got to slow down. Growing fast, you get the, the money's coming in, the powers coming in, uh, the, the 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 need and the desire for sometimes a healthy need for the desire for solitude can get completely perverted and and turns into a, a desire for isolation. And they're not one and the same. Solitude with God and getting on your knees and getting into a prayer closet is not the same as isolation from community and accountability. They're not the same wasn't one of those guys who people didn't reach out to. I had a lot of people reach out to me. I had people checking on me. I was in good counseling. But I can't tell you, hurt people hurt people. I was overwhelmed. Um, we, Our church grew so fast. Our marriage was well documented. It had been challenging. Um, at the same time, that gave me no right to do what I did. Mm. You know, it was on me. 
I know people who've gone through really hard marriages and didn't have an affair. That was, that was my fault. Um, I have no defense. I have, I have an apology. I've learned through this. I can either, I can either have grace or I can defend myself. Mm. I have no defense. I need grace. I need God's grace deeply. Um, I've apologized to, to Jennifer. I've apologized to the kids. Um, we've walked through a divorce. Divorce is ugly in every form of the word. Um, and it's still not okay, you know. Um, it takes time and, and, and God to mm. heal things. Um, Jen and I, it has been very amicable. Um, we are able to work together really well with the younger kids. And that's, you know, we, they live with me some, they live with her some, and that's been... Hey, you wanna see something crazy? 67% of the people who watch this channel are not subscribed. Do me a quick favor, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you stay up to date on all the videos here on the Bless God Studios channel. I can't imagine going from having your children under your roof to having to split shifts. Like that's brutal, man. Another side of life that I didn't know existed, you know. Uh, it's, it's one thing to get up and preach to people that, that are in broken situations. It's another thing to be in one yourself mm -hmm. and one that you caused. Um, you know, I'm, I'm disappointed in myself, uh, and, but you live and learn, you know. Um, I, I, I have received a lot of messages from people that are really grace-filled and kind, and I am super grateful for that. Um, there, there have been some that I've responded to, some that I, I didn't even know what to say, but thank you. I've received some other messages that were not, that were rough, and I probably needed every one of those too. Um, to help me understand the gravity of this situation. And I get it, um, I think, maybe. I'm still learning. I, here's what I have learned. I have a lot to learn. Um, I've gone over a lot and, and thought about what I would even say on a video like this. Like, the, what does what the content of the video need to be? I wrote, a, uh, I wrote, a, uh, I wrote this whole letter um, that I was gonna read. And at the end of the day, that's not me. Um, me is, is just talking to you and, uh, owning it and, um, and saying, I'm sorry. Mm. And at the same time, kind of walking through my process, you know, my process, I, yeah, I've gone through, I have a wonderful counselor. I've had some incredible, great, uh, good Samaritans who did not pass me by. They reached out and, and they got dirty, you know, they got down in the dirt with me. They didn't approve of what I did. Um, you know, I think sometimes we think if somebody is associated with, with someone's healing that they somehow approved. They didn't approve what I did. I've had some really hard moments which were great that helped me. Um, but some good Samaritans that have walked me through this pain, that have wrapped me up. And I know Jen has had people wrap her up and the girls and, uh, and I'm grateful for it. If you're one of those people, thank you. I have learned that I didn't, you know, it was, it's weird how I could preach it and I could teach it and I could train it and I could, if I'm talking to you, sitting knee to knee with you, I could tell you what you need to do, but I somehow could not do it myself. I couldn't admit that I am overwhelmed. I have heard this my whole life. Halt, H-A-L-T, don't make decisions when you're hurt, angry, lonely, or tired. And I was all for it and, uh, and continued on. I think the tough part about this is, I don't know if this was one decision that costed him this much or if it was a plethora of small decisions or if it was a bunch of poor boundaries and one bad decision that then like i don't i don't know how you how you end up here but but yes it's, it's a bit wild where he sees he sees this stuff as you guys will discover about the story it's pretty pretty bizarre to say the least can tell you that uh, if you're in pain, if you're in sin, if, you, if you've made a massive mistake or if you think you're going to, tell somebody, man. Tell somebody. Get somebody in your world that you can trust and just say, I, even, if, even if you can't trust them, go tell somebody. It's better to tell somebody now than to, than to go through with pain in your life and train wreck your life and deal with the devastation on the other side of it. I went through every thought, every thing you can imagine to, as a way out, I thought it. 
And um, I would tell you, uh, God, God's there, man. He's there. I've preached about him my whole life. And um, been in, I haven't preached about him my whole life, but I've been around preachers my whole life and heard about grace. I've preached about grace. You know, grace is God giving you what you don't deserve. Mercy is God not giving you what you do deserve. And in this season, I have experienced that. I have felt love and kindness from God. Um, and I'm grateful. And if I hurt you, if my decisions and, and my mistakes caused you caused your faith to waver, please go back and listen to this stuff I taught. I, I told people, don't, don't take my word for it. Build that relationship with God. And, because even in my mistake, he's been there for me. He's been strong for me. But I am sorry, I'm so sorry. Um, I, I am at peace now. Um, I'm married, remarried. Um, I'm at peace with my life, but not with my mistakes, not with my sin. He's remarried. Um, I'm at peace with God. He's been very kind to me. I don't really know what else to say. I don't know what the future holds. Uh, I have a new career. It's uh, in the, you know, the, I guess the private sector, maybe. It's what you so I'm glad that he got a new career because you definitely are disqualified for ministry. But as I peeled away at this, it's got really bizarre. All right. It's got really, really, really bizarre. Jeremy Foster. This is from Julie Royce. Who you could have your opinions about her writing heat pieces, but usually tends to get the facts like this, right? Foster remarried Ratchet to porn? Thonogram? Nine weeks later, according to a copy of the marriage license, the couple's address, the property and Thonogram owns is the same as where Foster was living when he was divorced. Th this man re remarried the mistress he seems to have an affair with. And I don't mean to be that guy, but her name is Ratchet de porn? Ratchet de porn. Am I reading that right? And his pastor dad remarried him. He got remarried to a Thai massage masa, masseuse that he apparently cheated on his wife with. Nine weeks after he was divorced. I appreciate his brokenness. I appreciate his seemingly uh, uh, apology and, 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 and whatever. But if someone's truly broken and repentant over something like this, how does remarrying the, the, the mistress play into this equation? I'm at a loss for words here. Maybe there's more to the story, but nine weeks after, nine weeks after, Harris County records show that Thon Thongram, Thonogram was charged in 2009 with operating a massage parlor without a license. But the charge was dismissed. The mayor's license shows Foster's father, W. Mark Foster, officiated the ceremony for the new couple. Mark Foster is a bishop of the Pentecostals of the Twin Cities, a United Pentecostal church in Louisiana. Mark Foster did not respond when TRR reached out for comment. Uh, he was lead pastor from 19 to 2017, according to his church biography, his predecessor, Fred Foster, who pastored the church more than 28 years. UPCI does not have bishops as formal office. The church uses the unofficial title. It is unclear whether UPC gives its ministers specific guidelines, guidance about solemnizing marriages after adultery and divorce. The denomination's position paper states a Christian who commits an act of fornication and adultery loses his or her certification without repentance does not inherit the kingdom and does and without repentance does not inherit the kingdom of God. It's articles that faith, divorce, and remarriage constitutes adultery, except someone divorces an unfaithful spouse. So that's their position on this. Former Mega church pastor remarried after adulterous affair. Nine weeks after. Can a pastor cheat on his wife, get divorced, remarry the adulterous mistress, and be a pastor again? I really struggle with that. I, I cannot see that as a precedent anywhere in Scripture. And... The fact that her name is Ratchet to Porn is that ain't if that ain't a sign. I, I mean, I, I don't know what it is. Yeah, I don't care if it's Todd Bentley. I don't care who it is. That's 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 really wild.
Hey, this clip is from our daily after party stream. If you enjoyed it, consider signing up for our Patreon community for only $5 a month, where you get access to the replays of our daily after party streams, as well as the uncut extended versions of our podcast, Discord access that's private, and a discount code for our merch store, only $5 a month. And ultimately, it's the best way to help us conceptualize the gospel of Jesus using media, podcasting, and of course, YouTube. The link for that is in the description or in the pinned comment. The perks are amazing. You should get on there. It's only $5 a month. I'll see you over there, all right? Peace.